investment. So I really do personally think, look at this as I am investing in, in, in uh, creating or becoming myself a private professional astronaut. Of course, my price was uh, a lot less. My price was just the time that I had invested. And of course, it was very much uh, worth that. I think that uh, for me, it was nothing uh, to uh, compare that uh, opportunity to fly for a long duration in space. I was selected as a scientist astronaut in the first group, 1965, and uh, Richard was all of about four years old at that point. My first assignment with NASA was to go through jet flying school. I was a pilot, but not a jet pilot. So we spent a year out at uh, Williams Air Force Base in Arizona. And I can remember coming back home after you know, a hot uh, summer, flying airplanes in a sweaty flight suit, walking in the door, this little four-year-old comes, hi, Dad, you've been to the moon today as if that were just an ordinary thing. And so uh, later, of course, he got over this. He realized it was a more difficult thing, but he has managed to continue to follow his uh, career and to, to make that a possibility for him. If not to the moon, at least uh, for a longer period in low Earth orbit. So growing up with an astronaut as a father had the side impact of that uh, we always had experiments at, at the home. And so uh, it was extremely common for me to come home from school and find things like uh, what at the time was called a photomultiplier tube, which is really now the basis of night vision or a lot of uh, technology put up on uh, space telescopes, et cetera. So, or uh, the very first uh, Polaroid cameras, these uh, you know, pop-open Polaroid cameras that the, the design of them is actually still quite similar today, but we had one made out of aluminum, basically a prototype. Um, and so all of these kind of uh, bits of technology that were streaming through their house uh, that you know now I know we're at the cutting edge of the existence of these technologies, but at the time I just assumed everyone else on the planet had them too because we did. The only people I thought were quote real were the NASA engineers and astronauts, uh, and it was real culture shock to move out and realize that uh, the rest of the world was actually more closely simulated on television than uh, than than I thought was this more alien environment. So uh, uh, so you can see again why I have a, a real comfort. Uh, over on the engineering side of, the, of this business. So I think it's a, it is a very reasonable and, in fact, common uh, you know, question that comes up when asked, you know, why is it or is, is it appropriate for private individuals to be investing this kind of money in these kinds of activities? Uh, and one of the main goals of my particular uh, involvement in, this, in space, beyond the obvious I want to go myself, uh, relates to the kinds of scientific endeavors that my dad and I have already been doing at the bottom of the ocean and in the remote parts of Antarctica where I think we've already demonstrated that we are capable of investing these large sums of money to do these very unusual activities and then bringing back actual value in both education, uh, direct science and commercial activity that justifies this level of investment. So I really do personally think of, look at this as I am investing in, in, in uh, creating or becoming myself a private professional astronaut. So there are a good many experiments that could and should be done on ISS that are largely constrained by the finances. And that's another thing that the private community uh, can assist to do. Some of those things, like protein crystallization, for example, that could have value and have only been cut from the NASA program, primarily because of the lack of funds.